welcome back to Lake Lock Build. My name is John, and today we're going to be working on the railing that goes on the roof. So I've already started, and uh, I have taught myself how to weld. So I've had a little bit of a learning curve on everything, but so far I will show you what I've done. So let's turn around and take you guys for a little tour of what we've done here. So, as you can see, I'm building a very simple railing. This is um, two and three eighths pipe. We live here in the Ozarks. I'm originally from Oklahoma, and in Oklahoma, of course, there's lots and lots of leftover oil and gas pipe. And so, I'll show you the pipe. So the pipe that I'm using is a nice thick wall structural pipe. Um, I don't know all the details on, you know, the makeup of it, but I do know that. <laughs> When I try to cut it and grind it, it is unbelievable, but it makes it really, really strong. So let's go upstairs. I gotta wait just a little bit. I'm gonna do some cutting down here, but the pipe is still wet because you can see we have a heavy, heavy fog. Uh, the dew, we've hit the dew point. So there's a heavy dew on everything. And I really don't wanna cut it or grind or weld on anything that's wet. And so we're gonna let the sun get over the top here and burn some of this. Uh, do off of here but right now let's go upstairs and i'll show you what we've done okay i'm up on the roof now and as you can tell it is uh very very foggy this morning there is a heavy dew so i'm going to wait a little bit but in the meantime i will give you guys a little bit of a breakdown of what i've been working on so the pipe itself i had it cut into 10 foot lengths but you can see one right there and one right there. The reason I did that is because my trailer that I use is only 10 feet long. And so for me to transport this to the job site, I needed it in 10 foot. But I was able to make the use my multiples from my 10 foot to have just very little bits of, uh, of waste on the couple of cuts. So I literally only have, I think, maybe 8 inches of pipe that is, or 9 inches of pipe so far that is waste. So it's working out pretty good. So I have my columns. I'll turn around here for you. We'll just do, let's pick this one right here. So this pipe is the same as that pipe. This pipe was just cut out of the 10 footer and made multiple so I could get three of them. I got three of them out of one 10 foot stick. And then I had the base plates made. And the base plates made is a, uh, I want to say it is a three sixteenths maybe i can't remember right off the bat right now but anyway um i went to the steel place our steel company and had them laser cut um, they just took a big sheet and did a four by four with the holes in the corners the three sixteen cents holes in the corners and they just made that same pattern and put it on a full sheet and then just cut it out boom 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 had a whole bunch of them now the nice thing is, is that every one of these holes is exactly the same in each plate because it's laser cut. So when I did my layout, I could literally just take a plate that's not welded to the pipe and lay that and mark my holes. And what I did is I marked this one and this one just in case the plate slides or moves or my hole wasn't exactly perfect. I used that hole and that hole to start with and I didn't run the screws all the way down so that the pipe had a little bit of chance to scoot back and forth. Now, the reason that was done was that my roof has a little bit of an angle to it. And me getting the pipe in piece exactly perpendicular, if I was off ever so slightly, you come up 40 inches. And if I'm off just a little bit, then it's really way out. So I ran the screws about halfway down that allowed me to have the movement. So when I lay this pipe on top and tack it, then I was able to uh, get a pretty good straight run. And looking down it, it's not too bad for me. This was my first time of doing it. So I'm very happy with it. And if you look real close, I mean like, oh, there's a little, it has a little bit of a bend to it. But for me, that's all right. I'm gonna have that that uh, landing mat on the face of this right here so you're barely you're not going to see much of it um and uh you know it is what it is it's my house 
So let's go over to one of these pipes. Let's see here. I put some tape on it because it was going to rain. I didn't want the ends to be. We'll go ahead and take this off here. I'll show you guys. I'll show you one that's in in all about this side. So well, I'll probably have to regrind these to make sure before I do my welding. Okay, so I also went and had the coping put on here so that that pipe lays in here like that, this nice saddle. And they had a machine that did it, and it was very inexpensive, and it was a perfect, it's a perfect half circle. So let's go over to a corner. So now, this is what my corner looks like. So I ground that, cut my 45s, clamped it on there, spot welded it, and then ran a bead of weld around it, came back and did a grind on it, and uh, I'm very happy with it. Now, this particular one right here is not welded yet because this isn't my actual corner. The actual corner one will be at this level right here and not this level because I have a saddle this way and I have a saddle this way. And so it makes it a special, it's gonna be a special cut on this piece. So those four, which are in the four corners, are gonna be a little bit different. This one is just held here just by weight, just so that this thing doesn't wanna dip down. So those are just there temporarily, just to hold that corner. Same thing for over there. And so that side, and it was so funny. I do have to tell on myself, because I, I hope everybody realizes that, you know, I do make mistakes on these things. And so I got this one done and I was like, I laid it on there and I was like, hey, that is nice and straight. That looks great. I get in the car to leave and I'm driving by here and I look up and I'm like, well, that doesn't look right. And uh, it goes to the right. So that means this one right here, I'm going to have to loosen the screws so this can lay back like that. I got to cut that weld and then stick that out straight and then bring that back into center. So, whoopsie doopsie, it is what it is. So I brought my materials or my, uh, my tools up here. I got to show you this welder that I got from Harbor Freight. This little guy only weighs 15 pounds. It is so awesome. And it's a wire feed flux core MIG welder. Right there. And uh, it's 110 instead of 220. So I can just plug it in. You use my dedicated. Let me get this clamp off of here. Now I'm telling you, this is I'm not a this isn't a plug for Harbor Freight or anything. But this, this one is the titanium, and I think it's the 125 flux, so it goes with the one uh, to 110. And in here, it has the size of your, how thick of metal you can use, and then you could, it just tells you what to set it on. And you have to maybe adjust a little bit because my length of cord is over 100 feet and so I have to turn it up just ever so slightly because of voltage drop. But I'm telling you, this thing works like a champ and it is has not failed me yet. And it was so funny. We were taking the wood down and I had some wood. I couldn't get it and I didn't have my pry bar. And so I had this section here and I used this as a pry bar to pry some wood down. And uh, I really stress tested my weld and it was awesome. So with that being said, I'm like, dang, I think, I, uh, I think my welds are really, really strong. And so far it has just been wonderful. Ah, one more thing I was gonna show you. So this end here, this is all the uh, Marston match, which is the World War II landing mat will be the face of those. Here will be my cable. So I had to make sure, oh, and this, you're like, there's a gap here, right? Well, that's where my staircase comes up. 
and I don't quite know exactly where it's going to fall. Maybe there, maybe there, but I don't know that until that my lower deck is poured and we build that staircase of how much, how close to the edges. But in the meantime, I needed to go ahead and drill my pipe so that you can see where I've marked it. And I used a drill press, just a simple drill press. And I set up a jig with my, with my drill press with a couple two by four so I could lay that in there after I marked those and then drill it and slide it and drill it, slide it. And then I was trying to get it to my drill press to go through and do both holes. But if that pipe rotates ever so slightly, that hole is going to be off. So I decided not to do that. I just marked both sides off from the base plate, from the squareness of the base plate. And after I tested one and looked through it, the, the holes do line up and they line up really well. So hypothetically, it should, as that cable comes through, it shouldn't do any of this. I'm sure we'll probably have a little bit, but once you get them all in there, I think it's going to look really good. So we're going to do a cable system there. Now the cable, the spacing is every four inches because of code. And so once you pull those tight, the thought is, is that you don't want a four inch sphere to be able to slide through it. So if the cable's tight, we should be able to meet code with no problem. I'm back downstairs and I'm ready to I'm set up here is I'm going to cut my 10 foot pipe. I need to put a 45 on it. And so right here, you can see I started the cut and I was like the blade that I got. This is another one for you guys uh, that I screwed up. I uh, wasn't cutting with the crap and I was like, it's just a brand new blade. This one right here and it doesn't work with crap. And so I take it off and then I look at it and it's for the gas powered one, which runs at a much higher 40, 5,400 RPM. And I'm like, oh, so that was my fault. I just saw him hanging on the wall and I was like, there's one. I grabbed it. I didn't even look to make sure that the gas, because where all these were on the wall, or with all the saws and so I thought well yeah I mean it didn't even cross my mind to look at it so I went back and right next to it of course was that one right which is 4300 rpms which is what I run at so I'm about a thousand rpms a little over a thousand rpms slower which allows us to cut so I changed the blade out I went ahead and bought two because I have to do so much cutting There's a 45. It looks good. It looks really good. I wanted to make sure my blade wasn't walking on me. And so it looks like it did a really good job. I wanted to make sure that when I say walking, as you come down, that blade spins that it doesn't want to flare out. And uh, as I look at it, you go back and forth, it doesn't have any, which means I did real well. So. I've noticed um, from other people watching other people cut, once you get started and you get about halfway, it's a pretty good cut, but once it starts on that lower part, there's a lot more material on the bottom part of that, and so it's really cutting a lot of material, and so not to push real hard because you don't want that. The more that you push, that blade might want to flex in either direction, which doesn't give you a straight 45. And so I just took my time on it, and uh, it worked out perfect. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grind the end of the pipe so we have a good weld area. And so what I'm going to do, let me show it to you here. We're going to grind all of this here. I'm going to put a bevel on it so that the weld sits in it. We'll get all this stuff cleaned out. And then this end, we'll do the same thing. We'll do a grind off of that. And we'll be able to um, put a bevel on that piece too. And this particular one looks like it's not a square cut from the deal. So I think I'm going to get my saw back out and nip that off and make that a square cut. Let's check this one.
Well, after four trips up and down the ladder, well, you think you have everything, but you really don't. You have to go back up and down the ladder, so. But, I think I have all my stuff ready. What's neat was uh, within an hour of uh, the sun coming up over the top, the fog is all burned off. You can see the houseboats out on the water today, this morning. Let's see if I can zoom way in there. There's one way over there. But it's a nice, beautiful holiday weekend. A lot of people out. Okay, now it's time to get uh, get going here. So, like I said, I'm gonna start working over on this guy and see if we can't get him fixed. Well, I got some good news. My thought process looks like it's working out. My weld's gonna be a little thick, so I'm gonna have to probably make a couple of passes. But what I've done, is I've cut this section and left that section and was able to undo that one and scoot it over ever so slightly. So now when you look down it, that bird is straight. I'll get that welded and then I'll loosen this one so when I and I can bring it in and then once that corner's welded, I can run my screws back in and tighten it all back up. show you my uh, my welder was a little bit fat and uh, I was looking into the sun on the bottom part and he got a little fat there so nothing a little grinding can't take but uh, let's show you what it looks like yay she's straight and she's level okay now onto these pieces right here so let's get to work. Okay, we've made it past the bend, Tack those. Now I've brought up this one, and now we're gonna tackle that corner over there. It looks like I'm probably gonna have to do the same thing. It's a little bit off as you look down the line, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same trick of scooting it over and getting it squared back. See how it wants to bend to the left a little bit. And uh, so I need to scoot that to the right. Done. That's all I got to say is done. So, all fully welded. All ground. Smoothed out. Almost perfectly straight and plumb. Sorry. Almost there. It's enough for me to live with. But, let's take a look like some of these welds. It turned out really well. There's a 45 here for you. I don't know. I'm not a professional, but I tell you what, it it's gonna work. Okay, you guys like and subscribe. That's it for today. I'm gonna leave you with a little bit of boat traffic. What a beautiful day.